What you see now is not an insect. It is a custom car built by Ed Newton in 1978 as a show car. It features two distinct windshields with an unusual round shape, a body designed to mimic an insect, multiple exhaust pipes, and naturally, racing wheels and tires. The idea for this car originated from the employees of Roach Company, and Ed Newton was the designer. The assembly was entrusted to Dan Woods, Don Boak, and many other guys. This car became the signature show car for ISC for many years to come. Hundreds of hours went into creating this strange hot rod. It debuted at an incredibly large party during the NHRA Spring Nationals in 1978. During this event, they also celebrated the drag racing team's successes, the general presentation of the Roach coach, and even Stan Peterson's wedding, one of the company's employees. In the photos, you can fully appreciate not only the car's body shapes, but also several photo models, one of whom was Candy Loving, one of the most sought-after Playboy models of the time. Unfortunately, we could not find information about the engine or wheel specifications. Additionally, Ed Newton believed that this is what cars would look like in the 2010s. Citroën Karen. It was 1980, and the Paris Motor Show, a show always regarded as one of the industry's most important, especially for Citroën, was in its own living room. The Chevron brand was looking for a model that would surprise the public and the media, and Karen would perform that role. As is customary in the French house, an absolutely futuristic prototype was presented, both conceptually and in form. It offered a new style, one that reminded us of a pyramid. It was defined by its edges, with a tiny roof featuring massive glass surfaces that formed the windshield and rear window. Naturally, the dashboard and instruments also introduced new features compared to any conventional model. The controls were centralized with a single-spoke futuristic steering wheel. All the controls were focused around the frame, as had been the case in various models of the brand. One could say that the rest of the dashboard was non-existent, with small digital screens on the sides aiming for minimalism. Contrary to what it might seem, the Citroën Karen did indeed serve as an inspiration for future models of the brand, though it never reached production. Lancia Bertoni Stratos 1970 In November 1970, visitors to the Turin Auto Show could witness another wedge-shaped creation by designer Marcello Gandini named Bertone Stratos Zero. However, looking at this car, one didn't need to ask who the designer was, as Gandini's signature style was unmistakably present in all the sports cars he designed. In November 1971, again in Turin, the debut of the Lancia Stratos HF sports car took place, which was noticeably different from the Stratos Zero concept presented a year earlier. Gandini, with the participation of Gianpaolo Dallara, redesigned the body. The rear-engine car became mid-engined, the aluminum body was replaced with a fiberglass one, and the 1.6-liter Lancia engine gave way to a 2.4-liter engine from the Ferrari Dino 246 GT, from which it also borrowed a 5-speed manual transmission. The legendary Lancia Stratos HF0, released in 1972, could speed up to 100 km per hour in just 6 seconds. It was not only admired for its power, but also for its design. The model's futuristic, streamlined appearance resembled a spacecraft designed for terrestrial travel. The Lancia Stratos HF0 was produced from 1972 to 1974. Its designer was Marcello Gandini from Bertone. The car weighed 980 kilograms and could accelerate to 100 kilometers per hour in six seconds, reaching a top speed of 230 kilometers per hour. It had a fuel consumption of over 16 liters per 100 kilometers and a 148 liter trunk. In the 1970s, car designers created interesting models, with Lancia standing out significantly, a blend of classic and psychedelic styles, science fiction harmonized with aerodynamic forms. The Lancia Stratus HF Zero's interior was also unique, with nearly horizontal seats and a trapezoidal windshield providing excellent visibility. Currently, the Stratos HF Stridale, road version, can be purchased for $100,000, while racing versions are valued at a million. The Stratos Zero was restored in 2000, and in 2011 it was sold by RM Auctions for $915,000. Maserati Boomerang 1972 The Boomerang looked like it was speeding at 100 miles per hour, even when stationary. The interior was equally futuristic, featuring a steering wheel with a stationary hub that housed the instruments, ranking among the most unusual steering wheels of all time. Due to the extremely low height of the body, the driver and passenger were in a semi-reclining position. 
the interior was completely leather-wrapped. In those years, the automotive business was simpler, and concept cars were sometimes sold to private individuals after exhibitions. In 1972, after the Barcelona Auto Show, the boomerang was sold to a club owner in the Spanish city of Benidorm, who used the car as intended. In 1980, the boomerang was acquired by a German Maserati enthusiast who had dreamed of it for eight years. After a thorough restoration, the car appeared at an elegance contest in Paris, where one of the judges, Giorgetto Giugiaro, autographed the rear panel overcome by nostalgia. Since then, the boomerang has won numerous awards at various thematic contests and events. It was transported to exhibitions not only by car carrier, but also under its own power. The boomerang changed hands several times, but each owner maintained it in its original condition. A concept car in private hands is quite rare, and a fully functional road legal car is extremely rare. Such a car would adorn any collection. This was the rationale of the new owner of the Maserati boomerang, who paid 3,335,000 euros for it in September 2015. Toyota FCX80 Concept Car This experimental urban car of the future is fuel-efficient, very light and compact. Its sharply sloping hood features a headlight unit. The cabin seats four people. Thanks to the front-wheel drive, the cabin floor is flat, making the interior very spacious. Large glass areas provide good visibility for the driver and passengers. Alfa Romeo Navajo, 1976 The concept car was presented at the Geneva Motor Show in March 1976. The Alfa Romeo Navajo was built on the basis of the Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale. The body was made of fiberglass, which helped keep the car's weight minimal. It was equipped with a 2-liter V8 engine with a fuel injection system from Spica, delivering about 233 horsepower at 8,800 revolutions per minute. The Alfa Romeo Navajo was not intended for mass production and was only manufactured in eight units. In 1976, when the idea of a flat earth was as outdated as flat cars, Alfa Romeo and their colleagues from the Bertone studio conceived an interesting wedge on wheels known as the Alfa Romeo Navajo, which was built on the tubular racing chassis of that era. Indeed, the car was akin to the magnificent 33 Stradale. The Navajo was the last in a series of six cars based on the 33, two from Bertone, one from Giugiaro, and three from Pininfarina. Unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show in 1976, the Alfa Romeo Navajo featured a simple yet original design. The wedge shape was in line with the aesthetic of the time and was well suited for generating aerodynamic downforce. The most distinctive feature of the concept was that the pop-up headlights unfolded from the sides of the wings, rather than from the hood area, as was traditionally done. Inside, the minimalist approach was evident, with all functions accessible through a screen situated in front of the driver's seat. The Navajo was remarkably light by today's standards with the racing chassis and fiberglass body totaling only 870 kilograms. It was also quite compact, measuring just 3.8 meters in length, making this Alfa Romeo shorter than a Mini Cooper, and even lower than most modern supercars at 1,050 millimeters in height. 